recording. Hello, pretty people. How is everyone? So this is um, kind of a dry run, I guess, for this video because I don't know how the sound is going to be. There's a lot of humming on my balcony from the um, air conditioners on the other buildings. Um, oh, I have a friend with me. It's a crystal. It's an aquamarine. Um, <clears throat> Someone sent it to me. I, I I would never buy one because, you know, they're forbidden. Or are they not? I don't know. Isn't that what we're saying? Um, yeah, I was thinking about, there's a lot going on, the Williamson campaign, and um, she had just released a statement talking about how um, the, main, the, the mainstream media continues to uh, promulgate the, the narrative that she is a crystal lady, um, which is not. Um, I mean, Marianne Williamson's angle, which, you know, as the candidate, I guess has to be her angle, which is that... Um, to say what she is and what she's not, and uh, fair enough. Um, but I also feel like I kind of, my question is, what, it, what are these, um, news networks saying when they use the term crystal lady? First of all, I'd like to point out that they don't say crystal guy or crystal person. It's a crystal lady because the inferent the implication is that it's um, something that women like to do and um, interestingly enough I was on a call with uh, Carlos and um, someone else uh, the the guy for for rank choice voting the ranked choice media guy and we realized I mean we're all guys and we all have crystals um, <coughs> for whatever reason at home now I realized that when people say crystal lady they are referring to a certain kind of um, approach to wellness which is scientifically unproven and and that to um, You know, like this is a kind of a threat to scientific research, I guess is what they're saying. Like it's a slippery slope to go into um, faith healing and stuff and then people won't take their medicine. And then they're also talking about this victim blaming thing, which um, like if you, if you, if one were to believe in the law of attraction, then you're blaming the people who got sick or bad things happened to them. Um, which I think is a very strange place to take the conversation. Like, I, I think that the idea behind the law of attraction and positive thinking and all that is to give you one more tool besides the prosaic tools to deal with stuff. Um, I don't think it's, I don't think it really matters at that point whose fault it is. It's not like, you know, we're going to... Um, summon the Archangel of Judgment, which is who? Gabriel? I can't remember. Um, I'm a pagan, so I really don't know that much about angels, apart from what you tend to look up as a pagan about Christianity and the other Abrahamic religions. I would just like to point out that this, that the, the Crystal Lady narrative is, in my opinion, a um, very, very old prejudice, which is not even... Um, limited to the scientific community, it's not limited to um, Christianity or Islam or Judaism. Um, you know, it goes back to the Romans. I mean, even like in, in the Iliad or the, the Odyssey, the women who practice magic are being portrayed in a kind of villainous way. So there's this very, very um, old prejudice against women who claim some kind of spiritual power 
or wisdom. Because then the other's mirror gets very important to this. There's a book tour. Now, I don't know if you've all seen RFK's book, which he's kind of uh, pretty shamelessly plugging on his during his campaign about um, the virus. But, um, you know, that's kind of like, uh, I, I feel like that's kind of slamming women for, for being writers, teachers, well-read. Um, I don't know. Especially if they're like, like it's one thing if, if it's someone like Elizabeth Warren or um, Kamala Harris who have gone through the patriarchal system and, and not really rocked the boat, so they play by the rules of the patriarchy, and then they're given a certain seat at the table, which I think is different than someone like Marianne Williamson, you know, kind of, um, didn't finish college, and therefore, like, she, she, and obviously, you know, she's very well read on a lot of topics, almost to the point where she can quote stuff on the fly, um, not only philosophical things, but stats, and, um, stuff from, you know, election results and polling data and all this stuff which my brain would not be able to do. Sorry for the jiggle. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah. And then she was on this podcast called um, Cheaper Than Therapy, um, which uh, was great. And, and the title of the video is We're Still Burning Witches, um, which is a strong statement. But... I submit to you that the um, that the narrative, which is a word I absolutely hate, and the more I follow politics, the more I'm using it. The narrative that Marianne Williamson is a crystal lady that that is actually um, witch phobia. Um, which is not to say, like, that, you know, someone who's scared of women who practice magic, but it's it's someone who's scared of um, women teachers. The thing about a witch that's different from a priestess, actually, is that um, witches were self-made. They were women who taught themselves all their stuff, and it was a lot of word of mouth, and it was, like, a very organic learning process as, compa as compared to, like, you know, a vestal priestess who uh, learned in the system, so to speak. So um, it's a very unnecessary detail I'm throwing in there. But so, yeah, I think that um, the fact that Mary Williamson does not take PAC money and she does, you know, she didn't complete college and she's not, she didn't go to Harvard and she's not a senator makes the machine react as if oh, it's something it's like a virus, like it's, some, it's a threat to the machine. And, you know, if you want to change the machine, if you think that the machine is broken and then it needs uh, restructuring, then I think that she's really ideal for that. Um, she's also kind of practical to a fault. I mean, you know, every so often I'm watching one of her interviews, I'm gonna put the aquamarine down. This is kind of like aggressively mystical. Um, Every time I'm watching her interviews and they ask her some personal question, like, you know, what kind of music do you like? Oh, I like that kind of music. Or, you know, like, um, what were you like as a child? Or, you know, they ask a few things to get sort of like a picture of her personality as a human being. Um, I mean, you know, like the, the MSM calls her wacky. I think she's like inscrutable in a way. Like, um, I mean, she's, she's transparent about her policies, but as a human being, she's really presenting as quite sort of average, um, you know, apart from her career. But the way she talks, like, she, you know, there's, there's nothing really wacky. I would say that Klobuchar is wacky. I mean, when I've seen her at town halls and stuff, I think she's wacky, yeah, a little bit, but, um, yeah, I object. Okay, so I have a kind of objection to things that are reduced to like um, something so dumbed down. So like someone gets a nickname because they've got orange, 
they've got red hair, so then it's like ginger or whatever. I, I find that stuff very dumb. Like, pick something that's a little more. You know what? A bird lady. That's at least a little bit true. You know, she likes birds. Um, anyway. Look, uh, the other thing I want to say to, like, Mary Williamson and her supporters is that um, there's no way in hell that, they, that the MSM is going to call you a erstwhile author or, like, premier. Like, they're not going to... They're not going to give you a compliment when you're not part of the system. They're just not. I mean, and I mean, uh, <clears throat> there there have been other politicians who who might like to be called Crystal Lady as opposed to some of the things they were called. Um, especially, you know, given when you're challenging the war machine, and they have shown in the past that they will go to very extreme lengths to stop anyone from challenging that. Um, so crystal, I kind of feel like the crystal lady thing is kind of a cloak of protection in a way because it um, it allows for Mary Williamson to be underestimated, and um, I have no doubt that she can show who she is uh, in the right moment. Um, and uh, yeah, am I going to talk about Florida? I don't think so. Um, uh, yeah, because I don't really have a solution. I hope that the pushback is going to work. Um, I feel like the U.S., if it's going to say that the de Democratic Party is in favor of democracy, then they really ought to have primaries in every state. Although I realize all the, all the states are a bit weird with their stuff. Um, the, the rule that um, Florida is now attempting to enact is a rule that I thought was actually from Alabama. Um, anyway, yeah, where they have like the convention committee that makes a decision. I have no idea. I'm very confused. You know, I went to Ballotopedia and I have no idea. Like, it's very hard to find stuff. I did find some stuff, but it is very hard to um, do a search on there and get the result that you want um, if you're looking for like a deadline. And that's also like a lot of search terms. If you want to look for like filing deadline for ballot access, federal election, like that's a lot of kind of um, qualifications and conditions that you have to add to include in your search term. And then sometimes the website fails you. And Google <clears throat> is not the wonder tool. <clears throat> it was in the early 2000s. There was a time when Google was your friend. I don't think it is anymore. I think now it's a fair weather friend. Um, as long as you're not looking for anything that upsets the status quo, it's fine. Um, Oh, that sounds very conspiratorial. Okay, I think I'm done. I have rambled. I'm gonna go check if the sound worked and maybe upload this. All right, bye.